Dear friends, I congratulate the CPIM Tamil Nadu State Committee and its leadership for organizing this important convention and campaign against domestic violence because by organizing such a public event, first of all, the myth and the wrong understanding that domestic violence either only concerns the people involved or it only concerns women and their organizations is a very convenient approach to get away from a citizen's responsibility to fight for equality as guaranteed to us by the constitution. So that's why I congratulate you because that's one of the first wrong things which get broken by a political party uh, organizing such an event. And I'm proud that it is the CPIM, which is it's not the first of the events you've organized, but certainly it's good that you're organizing it now. Because although the issue of domestic violence and domestic abuse is one of the most recorded violent crimes against women in India, one third of all crimes in India are crimes of domestic abuse or domestic violence. So there are around 3.5 lakh crimes registered every year of crimes against women. And out of that, one third of the crimes, that's over 1.2 lakh crimes are registered of domestic violence. So this gives us an idea that this is not just an aberration, but it has become part and parcel of life for millions of women in India, because we are talking only about registered crimes and the number of registered crimes. So it is important for us to understand that when we talk about defense of the constitution, defense of democratic rights, a very core aspect of that is the right of every single individual in this country to live in peace, security, and in a secure and peaceful environment. And if a large number of women in this country, in the area which is their home, face violence and abuse, it's not just an issue of human rights, which of course it is, and which is recognized as being an area of human right campaigners. It goes beyond that, I think, because after all, the constitutional guarantee for equality obviously cannot stop either at the bedroom door or at the door of a home, because this is a convenient ideological understanding to say that what is private is private and outside the ambit of uh, the constitution and what happens in the public space is something that the government should be involved with. And that is completely and utterly wrong. And it's a total dilution of the constitution and its right to equality. So the second point is the right to equality does not stop at the domestic sphere. The right to equality of every citizen is reflected also in domestic and human relations and governments and society have a responsibility to ensure that such an environment is created. The third point is that although, of course, uh, the large number of the largest number, the majority of cases are uh, against women or young brides by their husbands, there, of course, is also the whole issue of family relations and sometimes woman versus woman, the mother-in-law versus the daughter as far as dowry abuse or you know, the disturbance of so-called power relations within the family is concerned. So this is also often used that I mean, women themselves are beating up women. So where are men and therefore it's not men who are responsible. This again is a myth because it is a patriarchal setup where uh, a woman's subordinate status as a wife, a bride within an undemocratic family structure is what conditions the relations of each and every member of that family. And even the most recent National Family Health Survey shows that this internalization that a woman is subordinate is there within women themselves. 
And it's a tragedy. And it's so wrong that this internalization statistically shows that, in fact, more women than men in India, 40% women of all the lakhs who were surveyed by the NFHA's survey, shows that more women than men, 40% women, 38% men, men say it's fine to be beaten up or it's fine to beat up their, your wives if they go out without your permission, if they don't cook properly, if they don't provide uh, a sexual service at all when it's needed and wanted, it's fine to beat her up. And women themselves feel that. And if you look at it today, in the year 2022, instead of such feelings getting less or weakened or diluted or resisted, unfortunately, prevailing ideologies today, including by those in power, including important ministers and government functionaries, and even a big section of the judiciary promote this completely patriarchal understanding that at the end of the day, the ideal woman is a woman who is a wonderful homemaker, who, whose whole life is only there within the four walls of her home, and she is expected to produce children and preferably sons, of course. May you be a mother of a hundred sons, you know, that blessing which is very much there in our traditional literature. So this kind of understanding of what a woman's role should be and is, is very much part of unequal relations in society, which are reflected within the home. And therefore, today's ideologies, the Manuvadi ideology, the fact that a woman is subordinate, is unfortunately a big political issue with those in power today promoting such ideologies. You can say Beti Parhao or Beti Barhao, but if your Beti decides for a self-choice marriage, for example, or if your Beti decides that she doesn't want children, or if your Beti decides that she doesn't want to get married, well, she is going to be in deep trouble, not only with such patriarchal approaches, but looked down by society in general. Therefore, the issue of domestic violence is also intrinsically linked to the democratization of family relations. And I think the CPIM is the only political party in India which has a programmatic understanding, a long-term understanding. And starting from, you know, from the time when our program was written in 1964 and then updated again in 2000, that democratization of family relations is undoubtedly the more, one of the most important factors for protecting women's equal rights in society and within the family. And therefore, this campaign against domestic violence taking place in 2022 also has a responsibility to challenge prevailing ideologies pushed by those in power of Manuvadi understandings of what an ideal woman should be. An ideal woman is a woman who is autonomous, a woman who has the power to exercise the rights granted to her by the constitution, by law, and by the rules of any civilized society of social equality. So I congratulate you again. And remember, there are important demands which we raise the fight against dowry, the demand to ensure that the law against marital rape, which has been drafted, must be put in parliament and passed. And the government is responsible for ensuring that safe and free environment and to support all women who raise their voice against domestic violence and the scourge of facing violence in the place we love so much, our own homes. So thank you again to all the CPIM comrades and to all of you who are joining this campaign. May we grow together from strength to strength. In collab, Zindabad.